What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna tell you three specific reasons that I feel that you should totally skip on Nvidia's new Turing lineup of GPUs, the RTX series, and stick with something more traditional like the GTX 1080 Ti coming right up. Welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So for those of you guys who are new to my channel, I do all kinds of console gaming videos. I do all kinds of reviews on different tech related items, pretty much all things tech related. So if you do like my stuff, you consider subscribing and maybe sticking around. So getting into the main topic of today, why you should absolutely skip on Nvidia's RTX lineup of GPUs that are coming down and stick with something more traditional like this bad boy right here, which I personally use in my own rig. So three basic things, really, really simple. I'll try to keep this video as straightforward as possible and as quick as possible. So number one, let's jump right into the meat of it, which is pricing. So after almost two years of waiting, guys, Nvidia finally came out with some new GPUs, which we kind of knew that they were gonna come out with using the Turing architecture and going away from Pascal. But what the heck is up with the prices? So I'm gonna to focus today specifically on the 2080 Ti versus the GTX 1080 Ti. It's been one of the most hot things that people are talking about and it's one of the ones that had some shared or leaked benchmarks and we'll get into that also because that's one of the other reasons why I should tell you to completely avoid it. But real quick, pricing. So looking on Amazon, and I'll put some links below in the description for you guys to check out, a GTX 1080 Ti today, brand new, ranges anywhere from 600 bucks to 800 bucks, depending on which manufacturer you get it from. Obviously, if you get something like the Strix edition, like the one I have here, it's around 700. And then there are some of them that are a little bit more pricey, just really depends on which one you pick. Now, if you go to Nvidia's website, like you see here, they're trying to sell you the RTX 2080 Ti for $1,199. That is more than 50% expensive than the existing lineup that you are able to buy. So GTX 1080 Ti at 800 bucks or an RTX 2080 Ti at 1200, simple maths guys, that's $400 more, which means you're paying 50% more. That's insane. That is a huge amount of money guys. That should not be taken lightly at all. That, I mean, don't take that with a grain of salt. That's expensive for a GPU. Most people who I know who have builds in their personal houses don't even spend that much on the entire system, let alone just a graphic card. So what should you be expecting if you're gonna be dishing out that kind of money? So I, I would say very obviously, guys, I wanna see the performance, right? If I'm gonna spend 1200 bucks on a graphic card, it better be totally kicking this guy out of the park. And while we don't know 100% if that's true or not, let's talk about some of those leaked benchmarks. Now, I will say this right ahead of time. The benchmarks that I'm sharing here on the screen are not 100% confirmed through the source. This was taken from a video that Joker Production had put out on September 2nd. And again, which was kind of debunked by Hardware Unbox as well. They went into a pretty in-depth analysis on claiming why this, these benchmarks can't possibly be real. And so with that, take that with a grain of salt. But so what we've really been hearing so far is about a 20% to 35% increase and it kind of varies across titles. Now, if these benchmarks are true, there is absolutely no way on earth that I can recommend anybody to even remotely consider spending $1,200 on a graphic card that's only giving you 25 to 30% more performance than an existing graphic card that you could probably find cheaper new or even used if you are lucky enough. So with that being said, like pricing doesn't make sense, like I shared looking at these benchmarks definitely does not make sense to do any kind of investment in a new GPU that doesn't have much more power that's worth, you know, FPS per dollar ratio. Just take a look at that. You're paying much more money to get FPS than you are on a GTX 1080 Ti. Now, again, like this, this is probably the most like debatable part of this video is because the benchmarks, they're not 100% real. I don't know if they are real and I actually highly doubt that they are, but there's a lot of speculation and a lot of rumor so we could expect, but anywhere near the price difference, you're paying 50% more. If it's not at least 50% more in benchmark performance, it's just not worth spending $1,200 for a Founders Edition card. And my third and last point why I think that you guys should totally avoid this generation of cards is ray tracing. So for those of you guys who aren't familiar with what ray tracing is, I'll just give you a real quick synopsis of what I understand from it. But the best thing I'd recommend is going to Nvidia's website or just Googling what the heck ray tracing is. Essentially, it's just a way of how they render reflections to make it look very, uh, very realistic, okay? So like lights bouncing off, 
cars or the way something refracts into your eye, just making it look as realistic as possible. Today's generation of graphic cards, they basically rasterize as a form of rendering to make those visuals. And it's not really, you know, they're just preloaded images that kind of look as realistic as possible, but they're essentially graphical drawings. They're not being computated in real time. Ray tracing is like, hey, if you light a lighter on this side of the room, how would that actually present light on another object or how would that bounce off of your eye? They do that computation in real time. So I don't wanna downsell it and say that that's like garbage technology or anything like that. That is essentially really, really cool technology, no doubt. In fact, all Hollywood cinema movies use that tech and it takes them days and days and days to render out a full CGI movie that's using heavy ray tracing you know, techniques in their videos. So with that being said, the reason why I'm saying you should avoid it is because this is new technology being issued in a GPU. That means that games that will try and implement that being a first wave of you know, early adopters for technology like this, you're not gonna get the best performance out of it. I mean, it's great that ray tracing exists in the RTX and it's able to do that, but that comes at a cost of frames per second and at resolution and even detail in some games. I think there were rumors where they were trying to enable in Rise of the Tomb Raider, the RTX setting, and with it on, it was barely hitting 30 frames per second at 1080p from a next-gen card. I don't know about you guys, but that is not something that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Does not. I'm not interested in ray tracing yet. I think the next generation of cards after the RTX series, when ray tracing is a little bit more evolved, more game developers are starting to use it, and there's more power under the hood of those graphic cards to actually push those with 60 frames per second and beyond, then we can start thinking about, hey, maybe ray tracing is the next thing. It is good to see that Nvidia is coming up with this technology and pushing it forward, but that was their full sell in the reveal of the RTX cards. All they talked about was like, oh, ray tracing performance is so much better than last generation. Well, duh, because this card was built for ray tracing as compared to the GTX 10 series, they were not built for ray tracing. But long story short, I would bluntly tell you guys that ray tracing is kind of gimmicky right now. It's not a technology that I would go and like, hey, take my money. Nothing like that at all. So totally skip out on that. So you've got three things again, I'll just repeat it. Pricing, benchmarks, and ray tracing. These are the three biggest reasons I'd say skip out on the RTX generation, go and get yourself a GTX 1080 Ti. It's a very capable graphic card in today's day. You're able to run all those games at high resolution with high detail and almost hit 60 frames per second across the board on most games. There are a lot of games that you can throw pretty much anything at this right now and it's not gonna give you any kind of trouble. Depending on which one you get, if you overclock, all that kind of good jazz. GTX 1080 Ti is what you guys should definitely be buying right now. Let those prices come down. We know that crypto miners are going down with Bitcoin's recent fall in prices and Ethereum as well. It's just making the market so much better for gamers, guys. So definitely consider buying a GTX 1080 Ti and overall just avoid the RTX 2080, 2070, 2080 Ti at all costs at this point. Let the technology kind of mature, then make an educated decision for yourself whether you should be investing your hard-earned money in that or not. As always, you guys know, this channel really focuses on trying to save you guys some money. I'm not gonna recommend that you go and dish out a whole bunch of money if it's absolutely not worth it. And I think in this case, go ahead and save those extra bucks in your pocket, spend it on something that you've been wanting to build or save it up for the next generation. Really all up to you. But with that, this is a very hot topic. So I would love to debate this with you guys in comments. Please let me know what you think. What are your thoughts? Is that something that you've already pre-ordered? Is it something you've been considering pre-ordering? or you just generally disagree with what I think or what I've been saying in this video. Let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to engage with you guys. If this video was helpful and you like this kind of content, let me know as well in the comments below. Drop a thumbs up, maybe hit that subscribe button because you do know it helps this channel grow. So until then, I will see you guys on my next one. Until then, stay smiling, you happy folks.